Hey guys, I swear this is going to be one of the best episodes ever. Okay, first off, I have so many projects going on. I've got a about a 1918 Gibson uh, mandolin sitting over there. I've been traveling to work on about the same vintage 19 teens Gibson mando bass. Um, there's an alto lute that has a, a bowl back somewhere going on and the front end of a stand-up bass is very old so I get those kinds of projects going on here and elsewhere but every once in a while something comes up and my weekend started off with my let me see here I got so many guitars around here so much junk you wouldn't even believe it but you remember this 30s Regal made resonator with the Dopier Brothers cone that was made in Los Angeles. So I got some more to share about this. I've picked up some further information about additional and uh, when the time comes where I've got that episode released, you're going to see Cody Harrell and Cedric Burnside playing this guitar. I hate to make you wait, but the link will be up there. So, um, I got a call or a message and it was kind of one of those you know ones that get your attention like said something about I uh, have been told about you that's me by somebody in Tampa Florida who describes me as some kind of folk hero of junk guitars or something and then as the story progressed I um, started off in cigar box car guitars and then I <laughs> turned my back on the cigar box guitar community guys listen when you make 200 episodes about a cigar box guitar unless you are Del Puckett or Darren Dukes party's over guys I swear I've got a bunch of videos out there you'll find them but the guys that were learning from me I learned from Darren Dukes and it gets to a point where the guys that watched your channel a couple times are way better than you already it was time to move on but but anyway thanks but this sounded like I was reading Aesop's Fable and I was the main character I mean I got that going on in my head all the time anyway so but thanks for your help anyway so I come home from the troubadour, get very little sleep, and, 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 and I get this message. So somebody's coming through town, and they've got a resonator that they need fixed. And I'm, I guess I'm the one. Um, sometimes that scares me because it's so far gone that I'm the only one left. You don't care. It's like I am the... Um, I am the last chance get out the paddles clear of guitars <laughs> that's kind of fun anyway let's get back on track um, I looked at the picture that was sent to me and you know what the guitar and what it was doing I have one in my uh, what do you call it inventory term used loosely of guitars that I pick on the st street up for on the street for next to nothing because they've got problems and I had seen this problem before so I actually met the person all right guys before we go on I think we need to stop right here and get this moment that I went and met the person who had the guitar um, and I will warn you it's very windy the footage sounds very windy and so if you don't like wind wind don't like you either so let's go check this out what's going on everybody we're out here at an undisclosed location tam kenneth palmero yours truly emo and my dog savannah uh, I heard some buzzings. I don't trust many people, but there's one person I trust. He was out in Tampa and he spoke he spoke about this mythological guitar builder. Someone like a folk hero. Someone who's a rebellion, a free spirit. And he told me he's the only one that could properly fix up my baby. 
My baby's been laughed at by many. The high-end luthiers in New York City say it's worthless. But for what me and this guitar have been through, there's nothing that's worth more to it. To me, than it. Except maybe my dog, Savannah. So this guy, this guy Ken, he has the audacity to tell me that I have some screws loose. And that I need to, I need to just pull the cone. I just need to let my screws be loose and just pull it. So I guess that's what we're going to do. What you may not know is this guitar has been through a lot. That's why I love it. It's probably a lot of train grit, side of highways, singing on the streets of Wyoming. Got a little bit of that in there. But, uh, yeah. Hopefully we're going to get this thing sound a little bit better so that the, uh, the magic of music can uh, take place a little bit clearer. The real reason we're here is I'm reminded like gratefully by my new friend Tam is that she reminded me we're here because of the magic of music and maybe we forget about that sometimes when we're concerned about making money or recording great albums but there's uh, there's something magical about music and what it does to us and how it makes us feel and that's why we're really here and I'm grateful to Tam for reminding me about that. All right, what did you think about that? Did that restore your faith in mankind or what? So, yeah, this is the guitar. Stripped it down. You don't take cones and things like that and parts of a guitar that somebody wants back. So stripped it down right there. Um, the parts were left there. And I've got this home. So moving ahead, let's let's warn you here. This is going to be a really long episode. You're going to hear about um, books. You always like that. And you're going to hear about my theory about wood body resonators. And this is going to be comparable to remember when I first started telling you about arch tops and about how you could get into one that you found at a yard sale and you hit uh, eBay or Google and you start figuring, out, oh my gosh, this is worth this much. And then you find out you got to put twice that much into it to make it worth as much as they're saying. And then you find out you did something to finish or something else that made it worth half as much as it was in the beginning. Anyway, we're going to learn quite a bit about um, why wood body uh, resonators fall apart and then we are going to dive into this one and get it ready to go back out busking wherever it goes so I forgot where I was and it really doesn't matter so let's just pick up there you know what, if you don't like the front end of my videos, I'm sorry, but that's too bad. You are going to understand the history. Now, if you like resonators and dobros, this book by Mark Macon, Palm Trees, Senoritas, and Rocket Ships is, well, look, it's National National Resonator uh, Guitars. Resonator Guitars. There's a few... Uh, solid bodies and stuff that they made a few years towards the end there or later on in the 60s and 70s and then this one Dobro Roots by S Steve Toth is about um, regals and all kinds of stuff and if you find I got the page marked here the model 19 that my friends is this and circa 1934 so you had some in 32 whatever but you would get a dobro logo d meaning the dopiera brothers dobro or um regal or none as i've said so you could you know buy them up and whatever but if you like resonator uh, guitars I think I should give you a link to these books down below. They're pricey, but I mean, so is a trip to the fast food joint today, so spend your money wisely. Now, 
Here's the deal about resonators. I will categorize them with Harley Davidson's and Triumphs and Nortons and BSA, Birmingham Small Arms Company, guns and motorcycles, whatever. But anyway, those English that you needed Whitworth tools to work on in the 60s and 70s, and they were um, positive ground. So if you can't get your Triumph to run right and the metric and English tools don't work, yeah, they're Whitworth. Um, they got their own tools but the reason I'm telling you that these guitars are like those motorcycles because they rattle themselves apart and if you don't do maintenance on them they will literally fall apart uh, especially where the cone is attached to the body if the body is wood now you don't see them very often but I have a constant stream of resonators coming through there some of them are k remakes some of them are uh, one brand or another rogue these are out on the street fairly uh, frequently for a decent price range you will find some of them that you can pick up for 50 bucks all the way up to 300 now you want to look and make sure that when you're buying these things that you know what the full price is uh, retail price with tax and if they try to sell you the the warranty or whatever replacement yeah figure out what that is and figure out what the condition is and you really want to pay attention to a couple things and that starts with the screw so this episode is called uh, too many screws loose now this is actually a very low-end resonator from the 30s so so what would happen is they would make these and some of them have um, uh, the, the name Regal on them uh, some other name or they have no name on them no branding so I could actually buy up 10 of them from the factory and put one of my Paul Miro junk pile guitar stickers you know what those are in fact I'm gonna need one of these to put inside of something I'll be working on and I could just put this up here and say oh it's a Palmero junk pile resonator and that's how these things were you would have a jobber like K or Harmony uh, build you a bunch of these so you could put your brand on them sell them anyway this is a model 19 Regal now I want to show you something you've seen before I replaced the broken headstock on this um, but this is something you'll find on the street fairly common it's got some kind of lipstick pickup volume and tone control it plugs in um, and it's got a resonator cone cover um, this one's tore up because I never fixed it why would I fix it I probably if I recall paid $80 for the same because the headstock was broke off so I filmed an episode put some tuners on it right now what this is is it is a storage drawer for a good set of tuners a lipstick pickup and then we've got this cone and a couple of good potentiometers and stuff on this so these come through my shop pretty frequently got a nice little cutaway about if you were going to get into a resonator and you don't want to jump into the one the high-end ones and you want a steel body well some people will turn to this one and I've got two of these around uh, the place this is a Gretsch 9201 it has a brass body with a nickel plating and it, they call it the honey dipper it comes in at almost 14 pounds it's heavy built it's got nice tuners now I will tell you a problem with this guitar I've seen it more than once it's got a v-neck right here if that gets hit somewhere it will start to develop a crack and that crack will eventually come through especially if you're rough with these things and the bottom of this will pop off the rest of it will be fine so if you are going to get into a Gretsch steel body honey dipper again model number 90 9201 9201 you're gonna get set back brand new again without tax and case and all that somewhere between 600 at the very low end and 900 for a new one now I will tell you that these tend to hold their value pretty well so you're not likely to see one on the street unless 
it rattles and somebody has given up on taking care of it the good part about this one is the body is metal it is brass with a nickel plating and the good part about that is the holes that hold the cover for the cone on are threaded into metal always remember that but again Gretsch steel body I see people playing these doing gigs professional gigs all day long they sometimes get one with a, get a pickup put on it there's there's ways to do that where you can use the sound hole up here or the F hole I mean uh, to feed a potentiometer through in your wires and then do whatever you want to do but this is a pretty good steel body resonator if you're looking for something a little bit better than the wooden off-brand name models if you want to get in at a lower price point you have the Gretsch G9200 and this guitar pretty much the same guitar except the cones a little bit different and it's got a wooden body they tell you it's mahogany yeah it's got a mahogany veneer over it and some plywood underneath but it's a pretty good looking guitar now this one came to me for a reason somebody cut and put a pickup in it that close to where the cone sits and then if you looked at it from the side you can see that the cone is raising up off the body can you see that there's air right there now why is that well people take this part off and then when it comes time to put them back on the issue with this one is that the holes that the screws go into are right at the edge of where the cone sits down and if you get those off a little bit they start wallering out and then what happens is the cone starts to pick up and then your intonation is bad you can't keep them in place and when things start getting loose then the biscuit that holds your bridge right down in here starts moving all over the place and the problem is people will tell you I can't keep them in tune so I've had this one sitting around forever this one come to me right at the $50 price range so if you're stripping guitars for parts the cover the cone the spider that goes inside of it the tuners this is a pretty good guitar if you can get it for that kind of price but remember these come loose so why are they coming loose well they rattle themselves apart so a good resonator I've seen people use an earthquake putty poster paper string uh, wax who knows because the things start rattling so this was no surprise to me so that call that I told you about that I got the other day the person is saying hey I've got this guitar it's falling apart guess what yeah it's one of these let's get this scrap apparatus out of the way here whatever that is it's a strap I, I swear that's from the Troy Murrah collection but guess what it was no surprise to me now this one here has been on trains it's been all over the United States it has been beat up and busted up and it's and not anywhere near as pristine as that other one that's already falling apart okay guys so here's what we're going to do we're going to make the owner of this guitar emor and especially his dog savannah feel much better about what happened with this guitar once they see how common this is and why so we're going to go over to autopsy sweet b they're still filming quincy and sweet a i guess they got another season do you know what that is because if you do you are aging yourself so let's get what you're sure to covet off of the workstation and get this up here because somebody's leaving town soon and i got to get this done because my reputation with all three of you loyal viewers is at stake here let's go okay welcome to autopsy suite b it wasn't quincy i was just informed that my hit count 
has gone down because I've been doing flat top episodes about expensive guitars and apparently that's not popular with you so my hit count being down is on you pick up the pace anyway look at this yeah this is a Gibson about 1920 mandolin tore up from the floor up and um, yeah you're gonna see this one again got some curfing issues and all that but ooh ah clean one owner okay now before we get Emore's guitar up here I want to bring this one I was telling you about before 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 um, because as soon as I saw what was being described to me on the internet I knew exactly what was wrong now when someone decides oh I am going to put on a pickup you always want to make sure that you take a magic marker and mark up the top of the guitar and put that here and then get as close as you can to the <sighs> the sound hole that holds the cover plate not let me grab a tool here and kind of show you what's going on by pulling these strings and this tail piece back here off okay guys a couple things before we get rolling you are going to want to protect every junky guitar you put on with this nice rag here you see that and then bright lights baby you've got to have a magnet of a junk pickup on the back you see that because I'm taking off this tail piece and you do want to have a nice slice. It's not my fault that these people make a nice kit for you. But look at all of that. It's got everything you need to take a guitar apart in here. And you have the right stuff. Because remember, our problem here is the screws are coming out. And that happens because they get stripped out. So I'm just going to take my handy dandy screwdriver here or drill or whatever you want to call it and I'm going to go and look they stand right up it's just that sharp then I take this and pull these loose and get the cover off of here let me do that now all right there we go put these in your canvas tote that you have right over here I gave you an episode about that and I'll get this out of the way now and this out of the way bingo and we will pull this off like so do you see what's in there now what I want you to pay attention to is this is probably warped do you see that it's been pulled up where the screws cut loose so we're gonna put that over here in the padded room don't worry about it it's my padded room I can do anything I want with it now sometimes there's what's called a piezo inside of these and you want to make sure that this lines up with whatever it was lining up with I hate to do it before because if you don't there's gonna be a mess after you are done so we're going to take a little piece of tape here in fact two and we are going to put this here like so and we are going to put this here like so and that will tell us that this here we're going to get out the love pencil and put a mark right there and put a mark right there those two need to line up when we're done and this will tell us this is the front look I think of you guys ain't I special anyway ready I'm gonna pull this off look at that now do you see that right there if that is loose this is going to rattle 
You see there's a few kinks and dents here. If there is stuff on here, I've seen people with potty and who knows what tape and whatever, but there's going to be some rattle wherever this is sticking up. So that all feels to be pretty good. Now I want you to notice where these holes are here. See there? They're right off the edge. This is a bad design because it puts them very close. Now, look at this classic pickup design. You had all the room. You only had one way to mess this up and you still mess it up. You should have got that up here. I'm going to take this body and after that loud truck goes by, I'm going to patch this up and we'll put some kind of bicycle license plate or God knows what in here and put something on here that's flat mounted. But this all right here goes to the pickup. Oh my, look at this wiring job. I really love that electrician's tape, don't you? Let's talk about that a little bit. The problem with this is there's wires sticking out. I can see it right there. Every time you have to go inside of one of these, you are taking a risk and not getting the cone in the right place. The screws strip out and the screw stripping out is the biggest problem. Now let's get the other one over here and see if it's any different. Okay guys, the best place to store a cone is inside the guitar because if it's not in there, it's going to be lost. Now I'm going to pull these back down. That was warped. But we're going to get these in here and you can tell the way these screws are tilted, the cone being warped and bent a little bit is going to cause some pressure and side loading those screws. That's the big deal. Oh, I'm almost out of chick flick teal screws. What do you know? Okay, guys, here's the one that came off the road. The first obvious problem is there is no Paul Muro junk pile guitar sticker right there. Well, there will be now that I've actually worked on it. And there was some level of argument about chick flick teal screws. And you know how futile it is to argue about that. But some people's feelings are very fragile, yes. Now, in all seriousness, let's look at what's going on here. Let me turn on some light. Okay. We were doing good with all the holes until right here. There used to be a hole there, there was one there, and there was one there. So, as the cover plate got bent, we took a few things off trying to do fixing rattles and things like that. Slowly but surely, the hole for the screw got wore out. Now, when things start bouncing around, I want you to notice right here, look very closely. There is a crack right there going right to the bottom hole of the F hole. That crack actually runs all the way to here. There's one that runs here. There's a few checking marks and there's a few pieces of things missing, but that's okay. We are going to have to fix that and we are going to have to fix this. Next thing is there's a crack right here and we're going to take care of that, but in all the looseness and pulling things up and everything, we discover that this kind of stuff right here is coming off. And yeah, this is actually just mahogany veneer. It's plywood underneath and you can see that. But I mean, what do you expect for a guitar? That is, did I ever tell you what this one costs out of the chute? It's about five hundred six hundred dollars and then when they come on the market used if they're in really good shape they're three and then we've got one like this so what do we do here well i've put this prop together um, it is a piece of hardwood doweling there are different sizes you want that and you want to take and measure uh, or cut out a small block of wood because if you're going to put um, dowels and these things. You want to make sure that you drill the hole out so it's clean, but it doesn't have to be 
too big and you certainly don't want it too small where you're driving things in so I just make sure that that fits like that and then I can go around and say okay that one fits in there good it fits in there good and here but over here it's very sloppy these big ones are very sloppy so I'm gonna have to make uh, bigger dowels now what am I gonna use I am going to use European hide glue this is really good stuff I am not going to use white glue and common glue and now I can burn my hands which here bear with me this is worth it trust me you take one of these little bottles it's a it's an ink bottle it actually has a facet on the side but this is hot hide glue and we are going to use it uh, when you get this powder this stuff is really expensive but it's really pure and it's really strong and it's what you want to use but you're going to fill it up with that powder about up to here and then you're going to put water in it to just a little bit and then let it hydrate once you go to use it you are going to keep it hot and then once that's done you let it cool off and put it in the fridge because the stuff will get moldy I want to show you the Botox needle that you've seen before if I fill this up with this really good hide glue and I just squirt it in here guess what there's going to be dirt and everything in there so I'm going to put some naphtha around this you cannot get naphtha in California because in California you need a cancer warning label on your shoe if you're going to cross the street so lighter fluids the same thing we're going to squirt a little bit of that in there it won't hurt the finish the finish is tore up from the floor up to begin with but what i don't want is when i'm injecting hide glue underneath there i don't want it to be dirty and then of course we're going to come in with our friend everclear and make sure that happens everclear has alcohol in it which will cause it to vapor off so anything that we've done same thing with this we're going to get this ready and we're going to use hide glue we are going to put these holes we're going to plug them we're going to do whatever it needs to be done we're going to take them down as far as we can we're going to let the hide glue dry and then we're going to cut this down we are not going to put the holes and the screws back where they were we're going to level out the plate okay guys couple little things here these cracks that run out of these where the screws were that's where they always start where the plate is flexing again one to the F hole uh, one from here all the way up to here and then there's a couple of loose things back here there's some wood missing here so when the screws dig in and start to lose traction bend sideways they pop those pieces out like they are so this is when we get into the finer finishing stuff because it's going to matter later don't do repairs that just go down the road and fall apart so I use naphtha as we're going to inject that stuff underneath here to get this cleaned up we don't want dirt and weird stuff then we're going to take some Everclear and put it in there this and the Everclear come off in a vapor so anything that is dirt that will mess with your glue and again we're using fine hide glue we're not just using some scrap that you shoot in there this is no different to me than the 1850s violin and of course you're going to use the right brushes to get in there because we're going to touch up the finish we want to make sure that everybody can see that this is messed up like it is but we want to make sure it's stable once that's done we can come along and use my lacquer mixture the more that lacquer gets air the darker it gets so if you don't want it darkening up just put marbles in the bottle and that will raise it up and you won't have but between this and this I can match just about anything I also have a mahogany paint marker that helps me out now I want to take this really old chisel that I have sharpened up and made sure it's good there's earthquake putty there's all kinds of things on here i want to make sure that where the cone sits is not going to be messed up and flexed and bumps and stuff because that makes these cones rattle you don't want rattling so 
I'm going to take this. I'm going to go along lightly and get this stuff out of the way, like so. See, there's stuff right here. There's glue and all kinds of things. And then, of course, when we get all that done, I want to vacuum this out and make sure that everything is nice and clean because I don't want my sticker to feel like it's living in a slum. So, final thing I've shown you on fine finishes, how to take a razor blade, put a piece of tape on the razor blade to block it off only as wide as you need it. That thin piece of tape there acts as a guide and a protector for all kinds of things. And what I've done is I've made sure that this tape is in the spot where I can go around and scrape this channel and get everything right where it needs to be. There was some string in this one when we took it apart. There was all kinds of things where somebody had tried to fix the rattle. And so I'm just going to take this along like this and go along that edge and get all the gunk out of there. Like so. And then again, we'll take some naphtha and some Everclear and get all that dirt off there. We don't want any of that there. Notice that if I put this here, the vapor's off, watch it. So if I put it in this crack right here, that one right there, and I just spread it around like so, it does not affect the finish on the guitar at all. Okay, I want to tell you that back here, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, can you see it? There is a crack that runs from the top of the sound well down to the gap right here. So over here it looks like as if this part right here is cracked right here. We're going to seal that up, but this is our Everclear. You want to remember, Everclear will get down in those cracks. Now, if somebody's glued this stuff, you really, really want to make sure that you get any excess glue out of there. But that Everclear is vaporizing off and it's getting in there and getting the dirt and stuff out. We want to do that. And then again, we want to go along this edge and make sure that edge is nice and clean. You know, see, nobody ever gets this side of it. And yeah, this is certainly far more interesting to me than doing a 9-3 repeat on how to set the intonation on a cigar box. Sorry guys, license plate, coffee can or whatever. Anyway, I am serious about sending out good product. If it's junky, well that's the way it's supposed to look, but I want these fixes to last. And now that some of this stuff is loosened up a little bit, again we're going to take this make sure we don't cut into anything and get rid of anything that could make that cone sit funny. There we go. Okay, now I've got a bunch of this doweling and um, we're going to make sure that it fits down in there. But again, we want to make sure this is clean. I found uh, one over on this side that's still got a bunch of gunk around it, like so. And we want to get all that cleaned out. We know that the dowel we're going to use is this. We know that this is the bit. So I'm just going to go down, straight down, nice and slow, and go to each one of these holes. That's going to accept one of these size dowels. Now the stuff that's all loose and sloppy, we are going to have an issue there that's going to require something else. Now there's a crack right there and again that one right there and we'll get to that. But look at all the gunk that's coming out of here. Again a few of these are going to require a little bit bigger plugs. Ooh, that one was dirty. So 
now what we will do is we will follow up with, you know it, our naphtha, and we can get in here like so, flush that out a little bit, loosen that stuff up. Yeah, this isn't pretty. We're going to inspect this to make sure that, especially that crack right there. Now what's funny is this, this stuff, when you get stuff clean, squeaky clean will come into the picture here in a minute. And then finally again, we're going to take our Everclear brush and drop a little Everclear down there. Gets rid of any moisture and gets that ready for the glue that we are going to to put in when we, any of those cracks, same thing. Okay, guys, I want you to check this out. I'm cutting these down to 10 millimeters. Metric system is awesome. See, every 10, see I've got 20 of them. I'm just gonna run that through a little saw I have and I'll hopefully I'll return with all of my fingers. Okay, I have hot hide glue it is definitely hot. In my Botox syringe, and I can just come along and give that a nice squeeze, like so. Same thing here. I'm going to show you a little trick, okay? And I've got that crack right there, and it's going to come in from the top. Now, I want to show you something really cool. You see people taking call, uh, suction cups or whatever. These are actually holders for a phone. Use a moisture source. Yeah, I did that. Now, you'll see people pumping, pumping, pumping. You don't pump because the same pressure that puts the glue down will suck it back up. So what you do is you get this down at the edge, you push it down, and then you pull it forward. You see that? There's glue in there, and you just keep doing that until it disappears. If I'm pulling this up, what's going to happen is I'm going to pop the glue back out of that crack. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Start up here. Boom. Pull it forward. Look and see where the glue is. Boom. Push it down. And then they go everywhere. <laughs> that the piggy went. The lamb was sure to go. The glue was sure to go. Right? There we go. Make sure that where these cracks are running the surface, they will tend to follow the crack down into the sound well, okay? And then you're gonna to wanna to put this inside of your hot water that is going on. You should see my hide glue heater over here. It is coveters paradise. And then as things get to dry, you don't wanna leave big clumps there, but you just take your warm, wet rag and do that now. I've got some 400 grit sandpaper and I've got my little plugs that I've caught here and I've scored them kind of like kerfing and I just popped them off and then I keep my glue syringe going on and I just go to these places right here and I pop one of those in and I'm gonna take my little chisel handle from 1840 or whatever it is and I'm gonna pop that down like so. You don't need me to watch me do all of them. But there's a couple here are gonna need a little bit bigger dowel to make it work. It's pretty simple. Now when we get one in there that's nice and clean and flush, you don't want it to be any deeper but you're gonna take your hide glue 
and give it a little shot right there. And then that way, it will fill in nice. If you don't go, go through one of all those syringes or whatever, you can just take your brush. Remember, this stuff is water soluble, but it has to be hot and just give it a, a drop like that. Make sure it's all gonna sit there. Okay, some of these holes that are just a tad bigger that these get sloppy on. We don't want that. We want it to be nice and tight. So we're going to take the next bigger stock and we're going to take it over the belt sander and we're going to taper it just a tad. And then we're going to fit it down in there. You feel that? And then I'm going to mark it with the love pencil. I'm going to cut that off and then carry ahead. Let me get this cut off. I'll be right back. Okay, here's my double edge saw. That works pretty good. Be careful. It will take your fingers off. And I want to take my 400 grit sandpaper. And I just want to make sure all the edges are good. Remember the taper is down. My hide glue is still over there in the pot staying hot. The brush is in hot water. I'm going to take that. I'm going to drop that right there okay and then i'm just going to push this down now this chisel is really nice because you come in flat like this push that down like so now something really important i want you to take a piece of binding tape and i want you to put it you see because this right here has broken out you see that so I want to take this and bend it down like so and get it up to that edge and then pull it back see that and the reason I want to do that is because there is a chip of wood missing right there okay I am actually going to fill this with lacquer I'm going to give this hide glue a little bit, a drop or two here. Let that soak in around the edges. But I'm going to drop fill, meaning I'm going to put a couple drops in right there and build this lacquer up instead of trying to glue that chip back in there. That's not going to work for me. So when you're dropping lacquer again, you want to watch the size of your brush let's just do this right now it's not perfect but I'm gonna take a marker that matches this color and touch that just a minute let that dry and then I will use my combination of lacquers to figure out how to make that look normal it's gonna take a couple coats but I'll build it up to here and this little dam I made with the binding tape will help me out a ton same thing here now I want you to notice this one right here can you see it yeah yeah th this one is so wallered out that this just falls right through the next bigger one up does the same thing so we got to get into some bigger stock and you can see I've tapered that down because it's going to fit right down in there and when it's snug again love pencil right here and then we can just take I got a nice magnet strip right there our double bladed saw get that there take our 400 grit sandpaper the stuff is all fixing to come undone on me all I got had come undone anyway, have you ever seen Cinderella live you should good slide guitar music believe that or not don't worry about the hair and makeup just enjoy the slide guitar we're going to put that in there like that and push that down that sits right alongside of the heel block right there we want it to be nice and snug again flat 
keep it flat, push it down in there, and then we will take a drop of hot hide glue and bingo. This one's a little bit more touchy. In fact, a couple of these are here. You know what, Love Pencil, Chick Flick Teal Pointer is gonna be upset, but this one, this one, and this one come into where the cone sits down. Remember, these are probably not gonna be where the new screw holes are, so we're not gonna worry about that. But the problem we've got here is this is going to ride and be sticking out just a little bit right there into where the cone drops down. So I'm just going to take this, I've tapered off the end a bit, and we're gonna push that down. And we're gonna come up to the top there knowing that this side back here is gonna need to be chiseled down just a bit like that. See, we can take a file and do that as well. But once we get this where it needs to be, it will just drop down in there and we'll glue it. And then we'll make sure that this part is chiseled or sanded. Okay, that's down in there. Let's get this off to the side with our chisel, come down a little bit and come in like so. And what do you know? There we go. That one's filled up. Now, as with the other ones that need a little dam there, we're just gonna put that right here, like so. Dam that up. And we've got a little bit of something gunk knows what there. I'm gonna get rid of that. And then we'll just put a dot of hot high glue right there. This is one of those places where that little bit of tape right there, you just put the tape, the edge of it where you don't want to be, and then you just come along like this. And you never get down into the finish. Of course, the finish on this guitar is a little bit trash, but why trash it? You see, look at that. Got one little bit right there. Perfect. And sometimes things end up being right on top of the channel, like halfway. So we've got a little trick here. We've got the glue there. This goes to the outside of the guitar, so it's just a little piece of tape. And we'll run that clamp to right there. Like so. And we will push that in just like that. Okay, guys, now some touch up. Everything looks pretty smooth. Again, if there's anything sticking up that you think is going to cause the cone not to be okay, that tape is big stuff. When the tape starts to wear out, you want to replace it. You can tell because it'll start turning white along that edge like so. Now you can see that I am able to do whatever I want here without marring the finish. Okay, razor blades are nice. Now, I have this pen. It's almost mahogany colored. I can just do this. I can let it soak in or not soak in or do whatever I need to do. Like so and do everything I can to get some stain on here, especially in these spots where the veneer has shifted off, see? This is all gonna be under a cone, but I know this there. You guys never thought I was this thorough, did you? Well, the cigar boxes are all painted up, all purdy. You don't have to worry about it that much. See that? I have to a little bit of sand in here, but I need to get this drying because we're going to be ready to put it on the road. You're going to go along here and there and 
touch this up a little bit. See that? Okay, next step. This is acetone. This stuff will ruin a guitar finish. You want to make sure you know where this is all the time. This is lacquer. This is amber. It's been sitting out in the sun. It's had some air in here. You leave the lid off. It vaporizes off and it makes it darker. This is clear. It's lacquer. So, on these spots where we're missing veneer, I'm going to show you a little trick. I'm going to take some of this lacquer, like so, and I'm going to put it on this brush. This stuff's pretty thick, see? It wants to stick to the brush. It won't just drop off. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to drop it in there. Ooh, look at that run. See that? I'm going to go to each one of these spots, and we're going to just let it drop in there, and it's going to run. And it's going to fill in. Look at that. And because we've got that tape there, it's going to act like Hoover Dam. You're going to think you're right outside of Vegas. This works so good. See yeah, that's dropping down in there. Now you don't want to put too much on at once because it'll never dry, but you just touch it and it will drop right down into each one of these where there is an issue. See that? Any little gaps? And of course you're going to come along a little bit later with your razor blade and take care of that. Now, this is going to need to sit for a couple hours. I can do about four coats a day. So I'll be visiting this here before too long. Don't let it build up where it's all running all over the place, but let it dry out. And then, of course, you're going to take your acetone over here and you're going to rinse out your brush. You want good brushes for this. Okay. Again, be ever so careful with acetone because it'll make a guitar finish look like this. Another little hint. If you want this lacquer to stay clear, don't leave air inside of it. Fill up the gap with the these marbles. They're flat. You get them in the craft store. Now, if you want some lacquer to get a little bit darker, well then you leave the lid off a little bit, but you make little batches of this and you can get anywhere from this to anything in between. Now well, we got our lacquer out, those cracks that we pumped glue in, it's been long enough. I'm just going to same thing, this lacquer is thick enough, clear lacquer, and it doesn't want to drop off the brush, which is really nice. So I'm going to go along to those cracks and I'm not painting it on, I'm just dropping it onto the crack and it will run into the crack like so. See that? I'm getting a little antsy here. I've got another brush that was cleared off with acetone and dried and see it. Go to this other crack we had right here. It's almost like welding once you get going. You just put your thumb off to the side and let it drip down like so. It helps if the guitar rack is flat, but things happen. There we go. And if you remember right, there was one right here. I mean, if you get good at this, you can probably get a job in a nail salon and then this one back here is pretty big. Yeah, that one's flowing real nice. This is kind of relaxing and maybe 
you can just look around and make sure that there's not anything else and who knows maybe there's a little tree right over in this area over here and then of course while you're here these chips up here from what everybody's been playing you can just drop a little bit of lacquer in there while you're doing these and build those up a little bit of smart luthier I know named Fred you want to watch a minute with Fred whenever those pop up told me why are you taking wood away when you can use a little lacquer to build up all right I am going to put uh, wood dowels in this tailpiece and make sure it's okay for the next millennia and then I think we'll be done all right while well, we got the hide glue heated up the tuners are off and we'll push put a dot of that there and use some doweling here and our nice little flush cut saw there we go we'll let those dry up and then of course it's right to them with our razor blade like so all right there we go we're gonna let them dry and while we got the hide go out um, yeah check that out I see that coming apart pretty soon so we'll fix that up and all right it is the next day and we have some clamps and things that we can take off here look at that mess let's get this lined up here and we're going to work on some finish and get this thing back on the road because it's got some busking to do who knows where okay i want to show you something pretty cool here we've got remember the cracks we did there's one there there's one there there's one there and then there's one back here i don't know if you can see that or not so we used naphtha to clean them out and then we used everclear and then we went in and glued them with hide glue clear hide glue good hide glue and then once that was done we went in and went over the top and lacquered them so you can see here where these lacquer spots are and i want to show you something pretty cool i don't care if you're working on an 1850s violin or a gibson es175 that's got some issues with a finish you take a razor blade like so a safety blade and then you take some scotch tape a couple pieces of scotch tape now i'm going to use the center of the blade and if i look about how wide it is i'm going to take that piece of scotch tape and i'm going to put it on there like that you see that and then i'm going to take another piece of scotch tape like here and i'm going to put it about equidistant on the other side and fold it over now i've got an open spot here the rest of it's under scotch tape i can go wherever i built this up with lacquer like so you see that and i can just scrape that excess lacquer and it will not touch the rest of the finish because the tape is there so that little thin layer of tape and you see it comes right off look at that and you can you can hear it you see that it's come off to the side here wherever the stuff is and we're going to get down where we're even with the old finish you see that you can't beat this now what's funny is if I take it over the finish of the guitar it does nothing because there's nothing sticking up 
We've got that there. I think you get the idea. Now, if you look there, you can see where I was telling you get air under the lacquer and the finish on the guitar. That is the part where dirt and stuff traps right there. You can see that anyway. I got something to show you here where we're going to clean that up in a minute. But I'm going to go to these other spots here that we did and just pull them. It's so easy. Now, while I've got this out, I'm going to go everywhere where I built up lacquer after we glued in these plugs, anything that's sticking up that I filled. And then finally, we've got this crack back here. Okay, so while we are doing our razor blade work, we can go along anywhere we built up with lacquer. We're going to come to the top here where these things are, are flush. We want this to be nice and flush. So when we go to put our cover on, there's nothing sticking up. Now, if we do have a little issue, we can lay the razor blade off to the side and just wiggle it like this back and forth and look at that it will take it right down to where it's flush with the top you see that bingo and then again that tape will tell us where the top is we're just going to go along and do that then a couple of these patches remember the ones that were sticking out into where the sound well drops off I can just take my chisel like this or my other razor blade that has the edge taped off and just come along like so and get that out of the way we can turn that even this way and let it ride edge of the sound hole and make sure nothing is sticking out this one here is going to need a little bit of something so the chisel edge is sharp i put it along the side and just come in like that and split it down like so and then come like this and get that off and then of course i can just take my razor blade put the edge there and this is really pretty easy work okay now that we've got everything scraped down and pretty level I don't like the looks of that so we're gonna clean that up a little bit and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little naphtha on everything we did you see that and it's going to vaporize off here you'll be able to see that and you're going to see that there's just a little bit of dulling where we used that lacquer okay we're going to make sure that this is nice and clean everywhere again it doesn't affect the finish the color of the quality but it gets everything nice and clean and then once we get that done I'm going to use this special sauce that I wish I could tell you what it is but I'm not going to because when you tell people to do stuff with finishes they don't listen but look here there is several different ingredients in here that when you shake it it's kind of like oil look I'm putting it near the guitar so it certainly doesn't have any acetone and it. it's got some stuff in it that you've heard about before but when I put this on here it's going to clean some things off 
and the nice thing about it is when this stuff is working you're gonna understand what squeaky clean means okay let's go around the whole thing like this and then I'm gonna flip that over I'm not trying to change listen to that when you get that sound you know that you're getting down to what the finish look like before we start it now if I want to do something a little bit different I could take some thousand grit sandpaper and I could put it on something and, and sand this a little bit and then take off the very top uh, glaze that's over the lacquer that was on this and that would shine the whole thing up but that's not what's desired so there is some Everclear in this so it will vaporize off and you'll be able to see the finish looks like it did before we started okay before the next thing we're going to take this little vacuum I've got here and I am going to spare you the noise that it makes but it's got this little slot here that fits right down in between all this stuff and I've shaken the guitar down where everything that wants to come out is right here and right here and I'm going to pull that out Watch this sneaky stuff. We're going to take our little tool here. Want to look at yourself in the mirror? Yeah. Alrighty then. I warned you. We're going to take a piece of scotch tape. Okay, like so. And we're going to put that there. And then we're going to take this Paul Miro junk pile guitar sticker that I have right here. And then... I'm going to put it like this and we'll put that tape on it just like that and then I'm going to put this on here like this and then I'm going to put that right where I can see it in the F hole and we're going to pop that down with the love pencil love pencil is my best friend like so see that and then we're going to pull that out and push that down and get that piece of tape off of there because people are going to look at this down in that hole and they're going to go oh my gosh Ken worked on this guitar and they'll either love it or they'll hate it but by then I'll be so far gone it won't matter now will it <laughs> okay I don't know if you can see this or not but my friend that brought me this he's like hey there's some goop right in here that's shiny and the rest of it isn't so I don't know what got spilled on there or whatever but I got some thousand grit uh, sandpaper this purple stuff and I am soaking it in water and I'm gonna go over that spot right there just a little bit there and you can see that this isn't turning too dirty but look at you see that now when I go along here I, I can feel where this stuff is but the whole thing to him is it looked a little shiny almost like having new fingernail polish or something I can go along like that like so it's kind of funny how dirty these guitars are I did a a video of something about cleaning up an old resonator with Fred and where where am I I am so confused up here it's up there somewhere right yeah whatever anyway oh you hear that you hear that that's clean 
clean one owner. There we go. That should take care of it. Let's move on, shall we? Now, since I just happen to have another cone identical to the one that went in this one, I can look at this and line things up and say, okay, what is not right here? And if there's anything sticking out, I can just kind of pop that in there and make sure everything's okay, everything's lined up. And then I can take the Gretsch Amplisonic cover and make sure that it's not warped. That one's bowed up just a little bit. And I can put it over the cone and I can kind of see Am I going to be on the edge or where am I going to be? So some of these holes line up pretty nice and the other ones maybe not so much. But it doesn't matter too much because what we're going to do is we're going to take some blue tape and we're going to go, go around like this and we're going to take an awl when the time is right and put a little indentation there and we can see how close to the edge we are. Remember, if this thing is folded up and bent or warped and it's raised up higher, that will cause these holes to be in closer to the edge. But I think we're going to meet up with somebody and get them their guitar back and take enough tools to get the top on it. All right, so there we go. It is ready. Um, I'm going to meet up and we're going to do roadside Lutherism. This is, this is a repair uh, <laughs> tomorrow. We're going to put the parts back on it. I've got some tools to take with me and uh, it left here with a couple of extra things. Uh, maybe some chick flick teal screws and maybe a sticker down in there or something. But we're going to pick up the adventure back out in the field so you always want to make sure you watch things through to the end because you never know what's going to happen anyway i'm not sorry that this was a long one it's it, it is intended to be a classic it will be a classic because we all know when you get yourself in the doghouse and you're arguing or doing whatever it is you're doing my longest videos you pray for them hang on Yup. You pray for them so you can keep your mouth shut for about an hour to stay out of trouble. And then after that, that's on you. I'm glad I can help your relationship. Don't forget, see it through to the end. Catch you next time. Give me a like and a subscribe and I very much appreciate you watching me because if I was watching me I would enjoy the hell out of it I can't believe it this guitar made it all the way to 90210 this uh this guitar has been like a uh, a spirit animal for me or something it's like help me keep my head up it's help me keep food in my stomach it's helped me keep my dignity and uh, it's been through a lot as of most of us and I'm really grateful that uh, my buddy Ken's helping me uh, keep it alive keep it making noise keep it uh, tuned into the mysticism of sound and why we love music uh, yeah this thing's been hitchhiking I got it in Seattle I spent my last dollar on it and since then I've been banging it around, screws have been coming loose, wood has been breaking, but still it's, uh, it's been there for me, singing on every street corner in America, dang near. Sounds like it's gonna work, huh? <laughs> Shout out to my buddy Tam.